In this video, I wanted to show you the three main ways to change your foreground color outside of the eyedropper tool. Because remember, the brush tool, the shape tools, the type tool, and many other features that apply color, they use the color in the foreground color box, which is right down here at the bottom of the tools panel. So this is a follow along practice video. I've included the link in the description below for you to download for free the image or images that I'm using. Yes! If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. And there are multiple ways to set the foreground color. For instance, you already know you can select the eyedropper tool right here and then hover over your image and choose the specific color that you want. For instance, I'll choose this light pink and that loaded into my foreground. Now behind the foreground is the background color box. And this is where you can store another color. To switch the foreground and background color boxes to quickly access either color, all you have to do is click this double pointed arrow just above the two color boxes and it will switch from foreground to background. Keyboard shortcut is just to hit the X key, which is also my favorite keyboard shortcut, especially when I'm painting on layer masks. Now, I want to show you how to have a more full featured way to choose your color. If you just click once on the foreground color swatch, it's gonna load the color picker. If it's in your way, just click on the title bar and you can move it to wherever you want. Now notice that my cursor automatically changed and was pre-selected to be the eyedropper tool because that's the default tool that comes with this color picker. So by default, you have this vertical bar that has all the hues. So here you would drag that vertical bar to choose the hue that you wanted or the color. Hue and color are the same thing. And you see how the box to the left shifts to align with these pointers? So this is the pink that I want. Now I can choose inside this large color box to choose other properties because remember the hue is only one property. There's, a, there's also so saturation and brightness of a color. So if I want a fully saturated bright color, I need to come all the way up to the upper right. This is the purest color that I can get right here. When I make a choice, it loads it in this new box and below it shows me what the last color I had was. Now, if I want a desaturated pink, I'm gonna come to the left. I say at the top, if I want it to be a bright desaturated color. I come down to the left if I want it to be a dark desaturated color. If I want it to be a very saturated dark color, I need to come back to the right. Do you see how that works? So this is the purest form of color. This is the brightest all the way up to pure white. These two bottom corners go all the way to pure black. So the thing to remember is the left to right controls the saturation of the color. See how it gets more and more desaturated all the way to gray as I go to the far left in that new box. Another option is to enter the exact color values into the HSB, the RGB, the CMYK, or the hexadecimal color fields. It just depends on what you want. So you know color theory, right? Like the world is only made up of red, green, and blue light as it comes from any light source. And Photoshop measures that from zero to 255. Zero is pure black, 255 is pure white. Now remember, to have pure pure white, you have to have 255 in the red, green, and blue color channels. See how it auto-selected pure white and it gave me a new block of white because I have 255 in all of these. Now, if I want a pure red, I just need to go in and manually enter zero into my green and blue. 255 in just one channel is the purest color of that channel. You can see it chose the purest area of that box, giving me pure red. Now notice my foreground hasn't changed because it's not going to change until I click OK. And then as a last thing, from inside the color picker, if I pull my cursor outside of that color picker, I can actually choose a color from anywhere in my image still. And it automatically chose that specific color, that specific saturation, that specific brightness. And I just click OK and then it loads into my foreground color swatch. What if you want to use the color panel or the swatches panel? Well, just come over here. And if you don't see them, go to window and just put a check mark beside color or by swatches. You see swatches is automatically checked because that's the one I have selected. So this stores all kinds of default color chips that you can select from. So if I choose this yellow, notice some things that happened. It auto loaded in my foreground color swatch right over here. And it also put yellow up here, which is basically Photoshop keeps track of all the recent colors you've used to make it easy on you. So in case you're going in and out of a lot of different folders. So if I choose green, notice it shifted the green back to the very front of the line. 
and it changed my foreground to green. So that's a nice way to pick a color if you've been saving them or creating them. Let's go over to the color panel. You notice it's very much like the, the color picker, but there's a difference. Do you see the difference? Like as I choose my color on the vertical scale, I have a replica of the foreground background, which is a live replica of my foreground background. So notice my foreground is changing as I drag this. If I drag this to red, it automatically changed to red. I didn't have to click OK anywhere. So this is a, a, like a quicker live way to, to change your colors super quick. The color panel acts like a mini color picker in which you can choose the color hue from the slider and then adjust the brightness and saturation in the color box. Then the color you choose appears instantly in the foreground color box over in the tools panel. The color panel doesn't offer as many options as the color picker, but the advantage of this panel is that you can leave it open on your screen for quick access. And remember, in the swatches, to pick a color from a preset color swatch in the swatches panel, if you don't see the swatches panel on your screen, just go up to the menu bar, go to window, and choose swatches. And then click on the swatch or the colored square in the swatches panel to change the foreground color to that selected color. I hope that's given you a, a brief overview of all the ways that you can change the color of your foreground color swatch in the tools panel. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.